This is the dark side. No! Yes, and somebody once looked at a $200 motorcycle tire and said, no, I'd rather Jimmy rig a bloody car tire because it saves a hundred bucks and lasts four times as long. The idea is neither uncommon nor new. Since the 1940s, when motorcycles were slower, car tires were skinnier, and all riders were piratical wrenchers, of course it's been happening. But should it? I wouldn't care if they did think I was crazy. Switching to a car tire easily doubles the load capacity. On My Little Pony, I'd be fine either way, but consider a Goldwing, where the official gross vehicle capacity is already north of 1,400 pounds. And unofficially, well, even Soichiro Honda ain't gonna bring that up with the wife. He might call her luggage overweight, but maybe she stuffs them in those saddlebags anyway. And by the time many motorists twist their wrists, the weight shifting onto that back wheel can be in excess of 1,400 pounds by itself. Good luck finding a motorcycle tire rated for that. Wheels do two things, spin and turn. And the physicist says F because as a tire turns, the cornering force makes it want to curl laterally away from the rim. And as a tire spins, the centrifugal force makes it want to throw outward away from the rim. Hmm. Well, to keep us from feeling deflated, the Tire and Rim Association mandates that each of these problem forces be counteracted by two opposing forces for redundancy. And we have air pressure, squeezing tire against bead flange to stop it curling inward under cornering force. We also have the bead hump, squeezing tire against bead flange to stop it curling inward under cornering force, redundancy. Meanwhile, the rim circumference being slightly larger than the tires stretches the rubber taut against the bead seat to stop it throwing outward under centrifugal force, and the bead lock, these two curves, also stop the tire from throwing outward under centrifugal force, redundancy. Now two and four wheelers both have these safety features, but Elmo, one of these things is not like the other. A car tire fits a motorcycle rim like I fit a bikini. The hump and curves hit all the wrong places. It still works. We still have air pressure squeezing rubber against the bead flange, and we still have a rim circumference stretching rubber taut against the bead seat. So it works. It holds air. But we're running without redundancy, without the backup safety forces of bead hump and bead lock. If you want to slap horsepower on the ground and keep it in a straight line, well, that's why dragsters and trailers ride the dark side. Flotation in soft terrain is another buoyant side effect. And that massive footprint makes it impossible to throw out the rear on braking. The thing is though, I never feared losing the rear. I practiced losing the rear. It's losing the front that scares me. And on the straights, the dark side feels like riding in a rut. I'm stable, yes, but its behavior responds more to the road surface and less to my input. I worry as I feel it following depressions in the road, dragging my front tire offline, triggering the occasional wobble. Naysayers say that cornering a car tire puts you onto the sidewall obviously bad. But the Flat Tread Society cries conspiracy. They're just trying to hide the fact that a dark side tire deforms as you corner, keeping just the tread on the ground and giving a larger contact patch, obviously good. Both are wrong. Motorcycles appear to deform car tires to stay off the sidewall. So the naysayers ain't saying shit. But to piss on Darksiders Parade 2? This is not a good thing. See, car plies are meant to allow only four degrees of camber. Beyond that, the plies are designed to push back around this axis to encourage the tire back upright. 
That's why dark side bikes want to fall over every time they stop on a banked road. The tread is trying to get back to parallel with the pavement. That's also why you need to keep counter steering a dark side bike through corners. Regular motorcycles only need to be muscled into a turn. After that, they'll happily stay leaned over. But a dark sider must constantly apply counter steering pressure to fight the force of the car tire trying to right itself. And aside from being really annoying, this is also risky. We know there's a finite amount of grip to spend. If I'm wasting some, holding a car tire at an angle against its will, then I have less to spend on not low siding. But wait, if the dark side tire has more contact patch, there should be grip to spare. False. Friction force between rubber and pavement is damn near described by F equals mu N. N has to do with how many Timbits you and your bike ate for breakfast. Mu has to do with how sticky your rubber is. The surface area of the contact patch, oh, well, it has nothing to do with it. See, fat tires are only handy in that they use more rubber. More rubber sinks more heat, as well as simply being more rubber to burn through. In theory, manufacturers can use a fatter tire to get away with a stickier compound, a better mew, without having it burn bald so fast. But in reality, well, General Tire didn't have a hot clue that I'd use such a large tire on such a light vehicle, so it didn't make it nearly as sticky as it could have been. Instead, this rubber is silicated for a 4,000 pound car to travel 100,000 kilometers. The result is extremely cool running, extremely long lasting, but poorer handling. So, the bright side of the dark side is that it does work. Unbelievable, but after the first 10 minutes, I could hardly feel the difference. Car tires can be run way longer in hotter temperatures under heavier loads. Some of them can even be run flat, and it's comparatively cheap. The dark side of the dark side is that you're more likely to see spontaneous uninstallation, and the handling is comparatively garbage. We're motorcyclists masters of measured risk. We should all be able to weigh up which of these things are more important to us. Some people care enough about wind in the face to risk wearing a half helmet. All of us care enough about riding to risk doing it in the first place. The great mystery of the dark side is that it should be no mystery that some of us are happy to risk doing it. Let it go. It is the only way. Footnote, if you go for a walk on the dark side, don't expect anyone to hold your hand. Few insurance brokers know what to make of car tires on motorcycles, and even fewer mechanics will install them. And that need not mean anything, just that when faced with a girthy liability, the world asks you to shove it up your own big boy pants. <laughs>